Welcome to the Honest Designers Show, bringing you a weekly under the hood look into what it's really like being a designer. Today, I'm joined by fellow Brit and hand lettering legend Ian Barnard, our American friend and retro design master Dustin Lee, and talented South African illustrator Lisa Glantz. In today's episode, we talk all about battling with self-doubt as a designer. Often our egos are tied to our work and the feedback we get can make us feel amazing or totally crush us. Today, we get into how to find a healthier balance from self-doubt so that you can focus your energies on loving what you do rather than worrying so much about what other people think. Let's get into it. be honest i feel like um it's a creative thing whether you're an artist or a designer or whatever every creative person i know including musicians actually they all are like racked with self-doubt yeah. um pretty much at whatever stage so this goes beyond you know we've talked about starting out and finding your style i feel like whatever stage you're at even if you're really successful it's something innately in you i don't know what I'm sure some psychologist has probably (laughs) dug into this and done a study, the innate link between creativity and self-doubt. But Mm. I don't know. I I, I, I don't get it, but I know I have it. And I know you guys have said you're in the same place. Uh, I think Mm. what what differs creativity from other things that you could possibly get self-doubt is that there's, there's no... There's never a simple A to B route of what you're trying to accomplish. Yeah. You never know what B might be. You know, it might be F or G or what it is. And I think <laughs> I think sometimes you you have like maybe whether it's an idea and sometimes you don't. And then that that can cause maybe not having an idea for something might cause some self doubt in you. Because you think, Oh, I can't think of it now. How 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 am I gonna think about it? So it, yeah. yeah, you mean there's no kind of finite concrete thing it's not like solving a maths problem no or if you're in sales or whatever it's like okay i know i need to do it exactly this way to yeah get to the end goal. and whenever we that... make stuff too like we tend to get like it just hurts our feelings more i mean i think this could apply equally to baking cookies you know like if you bake cookies <laughs> and everyone's like your cookies like are exactly. you know rubbish then like your feelings uh, are going to be hurt right and like making a creative thing is a lot like making cookies but maybe even more emotionally charged and you're like, wow, like somehow you not liking the cookies means you don't like me or I'm not good enough. As opposed to like when you work at a bank and like you mess up opening the checking in account, you're kind of like, that's not me. Like, I'm not the checking account. I don't care that I messed it up. I'll learn. But yeah. the cookies hurts my feelings. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, because the, the artistic thing, whether it's musician or, or not, it, it's, an, it's a self-expression. So you're basically putting a little piece of yourself out there. And 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 it's exposing, so I guess you're gonna constantly feel that um, you're gonna be judged. Will people like me? Do they think so I'm an you, idiot? Basically, our our work and ourselves, or our work and our egos, are one and the same thing. Yeah, exactly. Like, That's I, what makes I feel it like so if hard. you don't like my work, you yeah. don't like me. Yeah, or you're exactly. or you're Lisa, and everyone loves your work, and then you just feel happy every time you release something. <laughs> and then you get this huge ego and just swagger in with all kinds of confidence. Yeah. Have you know. ever gotten offered book deals? I'm surprised you haven't gotten offered deals to like illustrate books for for children's books or something. We, we were literally so talking funny. about this before yeah. the call. Do, 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 do. Did it happen? <laughs> Has it happened? Um, I actually have been approached a few times by people, but unfortunately, they they um, yeah, they're kind of like starting out or amateurs, so they then yeah, they don't they're not willing to you know, put the investment yeah into Cough the project up. yeah <laughs> basically. Yeah. Plus, your time is worth okay. so much. You're just like, yeah, I can't afford to make a children's book. It'd be a loss. It would. It'd have to be a uh, yeah, passion actually, project, really. It's it'd have to be like a Harry a Potter ride. of illustrated books. <laughs> yeah, because I, I basically have to be so passionate about the project because it would take up so much of my time. Yeah, yeah, it's not <laughs> not a short one. Yeah. Okay, so kind of circling around this, and I, I feel like I'm going to offend um, everyone listening here. I actually feel like creative people tend to be more insecure as well. 
like and yeah, that probably. i'm lumping i'm lumping myself into that like if you think about um I, I saw this tv show where it was talking about like the spectrum of um being a psychopath basically in, in terms of the, the, <laughs> You're the wait, that I've seen that. <laughs> i think i've seen that yeah no no we're we're the opposite of that uh, so basically it was saying <laughs> people in in um you know, investment banking and doctors and stuff like that were higher on the spectrum of, of being a psychopath and being a bit more cold. Um, and then we would be on the other side where we're like these kind of emotional creatures where it's like, yeah. oh no, they don't I like my work. We, you know, we're so <laughs> intense. I mean, you know, creative people are actually really intense and, and, and passionate people. So I think because yeah. of that, we probably feel emotions more deeply, I guess. I know I mm -hmm. do. I mean, I don't know about the rest of you guys, but me for no, sure I don't have any. <laughs> yeah I, I i i feel like it's um it's kind of a perfect storm because it's yeah. like this unknown path we talked about it's yeah. inherently perhaps being um, emotional creatures mm -hmm. um and, and then it's like relying on client feedback and the whole psychological torture of that process yeah um and literally such a, a link between your work and and yourself it's you know what i mean it's kind of all of these things combine to make it really kind of stressful at points. And, and I think that's ultimately what leads to the self-doubt that we're talking about. Mm. Well, and the interesting thing is, and is that it kind of ensnares you too. So let's say you're not successful. You're then you're insecure because you're not successful and everything you put out, you're afraid is just a, a confirmation that you're not good, which is why you're not successful. Right. But then like when you become like successful to whatever that means for you, whether it means you're featured a lot of places or you get a lot of, you know, love emails about how great your work is or you make money, whatever the thing is for you, then you're sensitive because you're like, you start to define yourself by that. So if yeah. the emails go away, if the likes go away, if the money goes yeah. away, then like you feel like, well, then a part of me has been taken from me and it shows I'm not worth as much anymore. Yeah. yeah. So like either way, we you talked damned about if you do before. damned if you don't, you know? Yeah, it is. We've talked about it before with the social media thing, um, which you just touched on, where you, you get the like count or the hearts on Instagram or whatever, um, and you, you will put a piece of work out, and Ian, you probably see this more than anyone because you're so prolific there, yeah. and you will watch yeah. it, and you know within like the first minute how well it's going to map out at, for its lifetime, for that piece of content, almost you know to that extent, um, and your whole ego is like there refreshing it, or like watching it build live and you're like oh no 10 people like this and normally it's 100 by now and my hopes and dreams have been doomed <laughs> or is that just me being that level of crazy no no it is true and um you know even though i've i've posted so many um bits in my feed it's still it's hard not to get wrapped up in it you know i find it and what's weird is that obviously you know what's better than likes is interactions or comments because that means people yeah. have read what you've written exactly. you know digested it and then they respond which is actually them taking them time which is just you know they're giving to you yes but then you might like the, the weird thing is you might get one that's not very liked but lots of comments and so that sort of messes yeah. with your head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How, how should I feel upset yeah, about this? Upset? Yeah, they don't well, like I it. Say, they do. As someone who's done that, I don't know if this is what everyone's thinking, but I've noticed if I comment on things, oftentimes I get so excited that I comment and forget to like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I do that. Mm. Maybe or if you're watching like, it, the, you forget to like it as well. Yeah, that, yeah. that's yes. true. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, the worst thing is the tumbleweed, though, right? <laughs> I'd rather I'd rather I'd rather get like horrible comments. Yeah, then nothing uh, at all. That engaged people on an emotional level than literally silence. Yes. I, I think there's somewhere in the middle, like Joe Average, where it's just like it's sort of the probably the worst. You know, it's just like you want someone to respond in some way and so you mm. don't want it yeah, like you say, you don't want the tumbleweed. You just you know, if they hate it, at least that's something to go on. It's something to you know, okay, you know, <laughs> yeah. I can improve or yeah, uh, you know they they like it, so there's obviously an emotional response to what I've posted, um, but a nothingness is a. Well, this brings hard. up a yeah. This brings terrible. up a point that we talked about the other week, which I think is really important because when you're first starting, you should expect tumbleweeds to a good degree. Like you know, Ian said, which I think is fantastic advice, and about you know it taking you know six months minimum of consistently doing something and posting it and sharing it. To really gain traction in fact i've heard ian say lots of times it's a two-year game if you want to dominate youtube or instagram or whatever so like i guess it's important i think that people that are watching if you're starting like 
you should expect some tumbleweeds in the beginning, no matter how profound mm. or prolific your work is, because people have to find you and like there's nothing connecting you or interlinking you to anything. So you just get the tumbleweeds yeah. for at least a while. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think it can be helpful to audit yourself as a consumer with that. So you kind of think, well, would I like that? Or would I leave a comment? And even oh. if you do it for a day, actually note down or remember when you actually bother to leave a comment on stuff. And it's pretty yeah. rare. Oh, that's I know a good it is point. For me. And like, um, you, you'll probably see some patterns. So for me, I tend to leave comments uh, on people that I like and people I consider friends. So you'll probably notice, like, I tend to comment on your guys' Instagram. Yeah, when you I put did stuff notice out. that. But I don't, like, thinking about it, I don't really ever do it with anyone else. Like, I'll see their stuff in the feed and appreciate it, but I will rarely engage unless it's, like, really wow. Yeah. That's interesting because, you know, I, I tend to do that too, um, where I just people I have a personal relationship with, I'll comment on more often. And then like I, it came to like, it started to occur to me because like when I see hearts, I'll track them as like a, oh, I did a good job. But I could, I don't ever look and say, well, who gave the heart? That person gets bonus points with me. Um, the person <laughs> that gets the bonus points is the person that leaves the comments. So I started thinking to myself, if I'm going to leave a heart, I might as well just leave the comment too, or else it's all for not like leave the comment. Cause someone will remember it forever and appreciate it. And you'll build a relationship. If you leave the heart, they might not even ever know it was you that did it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At least that's um, my, what I thought. I don't know. What they started doing on Instagram. I don't know if you noticed is that you see a few names before you see how many likes it is. So you might say, you know, Dustin Lee, Lisa Glantz, design cuts or Tom's personal one. Um, oh, yeah. I've got a name in. <laughs> I like Tom's. Whenever I see Tom's, I'm like, wow. I feel so you know, hard. Comment at design cuts, easy, though. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, no, you do both, actually. Tom Ross Media. Is that one? Um, uh, well, it is, although that's a case in point. I'm but, so all or nothing. Yeah. I've got well, I quiet think there. they do it by the amount of followers you have. So right. it's like the, the sort of top two people who follow that person or who have liked that post appear first and then it says the numbers of however many other followers. Okay. So that that can also be hard because if it's someone you follow or you thought followed you and then they're not liking your stuff, you're like, whoa, <laughs> well, I can't, why am I not impressing my <laughs> that, peers? <laughs> the, 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 the whole thing is so ego-driven and it's, it's meant to be, right? Like these companies mm. design it that way. Exactly. Um, and yeah, I, I, I feel like it does kind of rack a lot of people with self-doubt. And as we said, we're kind of the worst culprits, I think, designers for that. So it's a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy yeah, in, in a lot of ways. And I'm just trying to think of like other areas where designers get the self-doubt. Like I know for me, it's been with um, clients and their feedback. Like even though you think you're the professional, you're the one who should have the taste and they should trust in you. Yeah. If they don't like your work, it still feels crushing rather than like, well, they're wrong. It's like, well, the client's always right. And so that's a lot of pressure when you're waiting on that first round of feedback in particular. Once you get the ball rolling and you're on rounds three and four, you kind of have a bit of direction. But when it's, I've been working away for weeks on this thing and all that work is pinned on basically some person turning around and telling me what they think of their work vis-a-vis -vis what they think of me. Yeah. They could turn around and be like, you're an idiot. That's completely wrong. <laughs> yes. I, I, yeah, I think it depends on, on your relationship with the client because most of mine were such long-standing clients. So when I got bad feedback, I actually didn't take it personally um, mm -hmm. because I had such a re long-standing relationship you know, with them. Um, I think that it's important to remember that Good point. I think where we all get it wrong is that we, we think we need to please everyone and you're not going to. You're just not going to. Uh, you need, I think you, you need to focus on what you know you're damn good at. And when somebody challenges that or doesn't like it, you can, obviously, you need to look at it and say, okay, well, is it is it is it crappy or is it just not their taste? You know, and obviously, if, mm -hmm. you, if you're doing client work, you have to adjust it accordingly. But that's why it's so important. If we go back to what we were saying last week, you've got to choose the right clients. You know, you can't, you can't be yeah, working with clients... Do don't suit you and, you know and yeah we kind of touched on it last week as well the client isn't actually always wrong i know designers like to moan about clients but 
I would say as hard as it's been to hear, virtually always when I've got client feedback, even if they don't really know design at all, they have kind of been right. Yeah, they like got when a point. Actually, yeah. yeah, like when I've actually redone things because they're seeing it from a, a consumer, like a user perspective. So they might not know the design theory, but they're quite often going to be your target audience for that piece of work because well, they kind of know their customers better than you do. And yeah. two, I think if something is... There's two types, right? Like, so if something keeps coming up reoccurring where people are like, your, your illustration looks amateur or I don't like it. Like if you hear that yeah. all the time, there's a good chance that's true. If it's coming from, you know, a hand, like a multiple independent parties. Yeah. But if lots of people say, oh, I love your illustrations, Lisa, or in Lisa's case, 10,000 people are like, I love your <laughs> illustration. And then someone says, Lisa, this looks kind of amateurish. Then it's time to just say, well, I'm going to have to like politely disagree with you on that. Maybe I'm the wrong yeah. fit because yeah. you know, you know what I mean? Like you got to look for patterns yeah. because sometimes yeah, people exactly. are crazy. That's true. Yeah. It could be like, I, I love the illustrations, but the font that goes with it isn't quite right. So you're, you're kind of identifying and getting to know your strengths and weaknesses. Like yeah. you say. Exactly. Yeah, totally. Okay. So in terms of. I mean, I don't know if there's any other standouts actually for you guys in terms of what really makes you feel self-doubting. Um, uh, one thing, one thing I was thinking about, and as I was thinking about it today, um, was if your stuff is mediocre, how do you stay motivated to keep doing what you're doing if no one is um, noticing your work? If you're uh, uh, Okay, question. Do you know it's mediocre? Yeah, do you know it's mediocre or do you think okay, it's Okay, I suppose it comes from... Um, I was just thinking about... I've, okay, I've been a designer for like 15, 16 years, 16 years now. Wow. And the stuff that's out on the internet or been shared is only the stuff in the past three years. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I've got all this other work, which is... And I look at it and I think, oh, it's just very, very average. And it might yes. be very, very average. And it's like... What if you're doing stuff and no one's really taking any notice of it? How do you stay motivated and not become oh, I'm rubbish or all my stuff is rubbish? Um, so yeah, you want to avoid becoming totally disparaged by a lack of any engagement, is what you say? Yeah, and um, I mean, we kind of talked about this last week a little bit in the sense of just keep going, I think, and. Mm -hmm. And the reason I ask, like, are you aware it's mediocre is because generally designers and creative people do because we have taste and that's what makes us creative. So we are aware that our work sucks and we look up to the people we respect and think, well, their work's so much better. We have the taste, whereas a lot of people would have no idea. It kind of all looks the same. Yeah. It's like a lot of people, all music sounds the same or yeah. they can't pick out instruments, for example. So the fact we know it's rubbish, we have the awareness to at least sense improvement mm. and that can be removed from you know feedback or engagement or anything like that like um you know i i always advocate people to look back a good chunk of time so probably six months to a year and perpetually kind of keep doing that just to remind yourself of how far you've come because otherwise you get bogged down in like the daily mire of you know am i getting better or not yeah. it's, it's like you don't you don't see yourself growing in the mirror each day yeah but you're going to see your work developing over time. I think I'm shrinking at the moment. <laughs> I, think, I think too, like to have a higher purpose to some degree can really help too. Like that's not related like to your, to, yeah, like that's not related to your personal, like um, ability with your hand to render a letter, you know, like you might be bad at that at first, but like I, I talked to someone recently who really had a passion for hand lettering um, scriptures and mm -hmm. She's not, she has no experience at hand lettering. She's not good. Um, and this is from her own, her own words, not mine, but she loves the idea of inspiring and motivating people by doing this. So I think that having something, whether it has to do with scriptures or whether it has to do with just some core thing, whether just wanting to help your customers or help with mm -hmm. a certain thing, if you have that core thing that has nothing to do with your skill and me, 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 and how good am I and how much do people like this? I think yeah. that can kind yeah. of be the core thing that carries you through as you're learning. 
Yeah, yeah. That's, you know it's what I mean? kind of like yeah, what I was, I was going to mention. Um, if, if you're concentrating on, just going back to what you were saying, Ian, like, how do you stay motivated if you think your work's mediocre? If if you if you concentrate more on, um, I don't know. I just think like as you were saying, Dustin, uh, thinking about not necessarily the end goal, but like how are you feeling? Do you feel creative? Do you feel vital? Do you feel energized? And and if if you're getting enjoyment out of just sitting down like that, and yeah. you know whether you illustrating or, or playing music or whatever, does it does it really does it tickle your fancy and is that exciting for you and that's what you got to concentrate on and I think if you if eventually if you set yourself a goal and you want to get better at something um you know like like Ian he, he set himself a goal and that's that's great and I think I think it's a good thing to do that especially if you have a particular skill that you want to be good at but I think mm-hmm. the main thing is is how do you feel every time you sit down and if it's stressing oh, you out that. then you if it's stressing you out, I think you're approaching it wrong. Um, yeah, you, I, yeah. You don't sit down and go, "Oh, I can't believe I have to draw again." Exactly. So, okay. exactly. Can I ask if you guys? You, that makes me really curious for you guys. Can you yeah. guys tell me, like, for you, like, Lisa? I'm really curious about all of you. Like, what is the thing that when you do it, like, you're like, this part is not work at all. And I know, like, like specifically, like, I'm sure there's parts of your drawing where you like. This is the fun part. I can just like zone out and have a good time. And then there's probably parts where you're tweaking things or doing something. You're like, oh, this is a grind. What are those things for you guys? Like where you're like, this part is the easy part that is so enjoyable. Like, I'm curious. Yeah. Well, for me, I mean, because it's obviously my style of illustration and what I like doing. Um, I, I kind of have these little stories in my head, like of characters and stuff doing things. Mm. So for me, it's so cool to put that picture on paper and that's the part that I really really enjoy like like I visualize little mice running around the kitchen and trying to bake you know I love <laughs> and, that and, yeah so, so for me it's your, like, your husband doesn't know what you're doing <laughs> <laughs> so at that point so, are you just thinking in your head or are you drawing with a pencil or or what are you doing when you're well, thinking of often, that stuff yeah well often I, um like I'll, I'll have that idea independently like if I'm, I don't know, watching TV or, or talking to friends, like an idea will pop up in my head like, oh, that's such a cool idea, um, you know, whether it's mice running around baking or whatever. Um, the best. Yeah, and then, and then I'll try and – I'll actually try and draw it, and, and that sometimes can be frustrating because it doesn't always work out the way I want it. But, yeah, that, that to me is the cool part. Oh, I love that. I- I sometimes have that, okay. not with the mice and stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my, um, mine is, you know, I might I think of a font or a collection of fonts or um, a lettering piece I might want to paste. Um, and then I think sometimes, uh, for me, I'm more passionate about the idea in my head. And then when I come and try <laughs> yeah. and put it together, it all f- crumbles up. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, oh, I can yeah. never do this. Yeah. And, and, it's and in the reality as the yeah. green hits the, re- the paper. It's just sometimes um, it's the logistics of getting it, the idea from your head into what that will look like. Um, but I know that I've been on my Twitter feed, I've been seeing some people responding to uh, Sean Wes's conference. It's just happened over in the States. And uh, I think he was mentioning stuff about that your your goal or your dream, um, or you know, needs to be outside of your where you think you can actually get. So you think you know? Oh yeah. So is this like his, ten, his Lambo challenge? Yeah. Or, so ten times bigger than what you think it should be, like you know, that, and you have yeah. no idea of how you're going to get there. Yeah. So yeah, it's like shoot for the stars, reach the moon, kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, I suppose you know. It's, it, and then it's. Um, you know, so so it's out of your actual reach of your skill set. So that you know, I suppose it must push you on, or you know, mm-hmm. you keep on pushing towards that, and then things will happen. You know, through you doing all that hard work, that will get you. You know, push you up to that level. Um, Either that or our self doubt will go through the roof when <laughs> next week we're like, why are we not billionaires? Yeah. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I sometimes have ideas that are maybe way beyond my level yeah oh me too and, all the and time. what actually happens is that sometimes they come to fruition 
but yeah. they might be like half a year down the line yeah. or yeah. it looks slightly different mm-hmm. but you know sometimes they do happen but it comes around in a not the way or, you know or even if it's like think about it maybe it's half half of you know the original idea but you'd rather have half of like a big audacious idea than 100 percent of like a real playing it safe idea mm. yeah exactly yeah. exactly yeah you got to challenge yourself I mean, that's that's half the problem. Is the challenge always means that you're going to have self doubt, and mm. I guess you got to. I mean, self doubt is also good in a way, especially if you're creative, because then you are pushing yourself and you are kind of moving out of that mm. comfort zone. Um, but I think the the important thing is to remember that there's space for every for everyone, and there's also you shouldn't really be competing. You should just really be thinking about being the best you can be at, at whatever it is that you're doing, you know? Um, and if you concentrate on that, I think it's much easier. Agreed. I, yeah. I kind of like the idea of the passion clouding out the doubt. Yeah. I think that's kind of what I'm taking away here. It's like, if you're literally so into what you're doing, yeah, you probably, you're still going to have the self doubt, but it's going to be dramatically reduced as opposed to if, for sure, you know, if if the doubt overtakes the passion, something's wrong. Yeah. If the majority of the time you're literally racked with doubt and you're not enjoying what you're doing, that's not the balance that you're looking for. Yeah, exactly. And it's and it's funny people um people actually sense in your work when it's done from a place of pure joy and enjoyment. Like, well, we did that video with you, right? Like finding your flow. Yeah. In terms of when you really hit your stride and get lost in your work. And I, I loved that. Like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's in- a, I really think that people, you know, they kind of pick that up in your work. So if you can get to that space, if you can get to that, don't think of anything else, just concentrate on, on, on your enjoyment, your work will be good. That's what I think. Mm, I totally uh, agree. Maybe- it, it, it's interesting because I've gotten a chance to talk to a lot of people like designers that are, I think, struggling with that right now. And yeah. when you look at people that have, um, like you guys all have where you're doing stuff and you kind of hit your stride and found things you love. And then you look at people that are struggling. It's, it, it never is that they are less talented or less no. smart or clever. Mm-hmm. It tends to be that I think they're focused way more on, um, what's, what should I do? Or what's the perfect thing to do? Or what's the, yeah. just the right position to be at. And that makes them get so uncertain. And then whenever I talk to someone that's doing well, they're always like, I'm doing this. I'm excited about it. This is, yeah. you know, yeah. the thing that I totally dig doing. And uh, I think yeah. until you said that, Lisa, I'd never realized that that's a huge difference you see. The people that are succeeding mm. are doing things that they're like stoked about. Yeah. They're not saying, is this the right, like, you know, way yeah, you to approach this? Yeah, you can't do that because, yeah, you'll just go yeah. mad. No, and, and that goes like, um, you know, I've, I've done a, a similar bit of design work today myself, actually, and, and really kind of hit the rhythm. But even beyond when you're designing it yourself, I find that in collaborations. So there's certain designers we work with where I'll be so excited about the project and watching it take shape and offering feedback and trying to help shape it. And then there's others where, you know, maybe more historically, it's like, okay, well, let's try and reverse engineer what might sell well. And it all becomes a bit cold and calculated. Yeah, it doesn't work Um, out. Yeah. But yeah, like even... Like Lisa, when we worked with you on that pack, I, I I was feeling like passionate from our side in terms yeah. of like, wow, this is like taking shape. It's so awesome. Like every yeah. time like new stuff came through, yeah. it's like, this is so cool. Um, and you're right. Like, you know, at no point was I kind of feeling self-doubt with that project. It was more just fun and exciting yeah. and, and awesome for me, to see it, it, it take shape. It, it, it's so weird. That was a weird... Actually, I'm glad you brought that up because that's a good example. Initially, I I went through a weird, like, emotional thing with that project <laughs> because... <I laughs> well, started, that's because I kept shouting at you. No. <laughs> I, started, <laughs> <laughs> I started out so excited and had all these ideas and everything, and then it kind of, like, got... I, I went into exactly that, that whole self-doubt. Oh, my God, is this going to sell? Do you think this will do well? Um, what if they don't like it? Yeah. And I'm spending all the hours and it's and I've got to, like, do this for Tom. And, you know, then there was, like, pressure and, and then it got all weird. Yeah. And then I just I just took two steps back and I thought, hang on a minute. This, this is ridiculous. Um, Tom has got <laughs> faith in me and I should have faith yeah. in me. And, yeah, and, and, then, and then it started kind of flowing and, and coming and- together. Like, without you telling me that, I could literally sense 
when that happened. Oh, really? Like, yeah. We, yeah, like I could see when it turned around and when you yeah. started h- h- hitting your stride. Yeah. And um, yeah, like that, I think that's, that's one of the main things to take away from this episode for anyone listening is self-doubt can literally make or break a project. Totally. Like it, it can slow it and grind it to a halt or it can, you know, make it go 10 times quicker and all go perfectly like it's it's powerful stuff it's not it it's not like some niggly little thing is it no i think it's everything if you ask me if we mm-hmm. and i suppose um i suppose tips to get to sort of overcome it or yeah we need those otherwise it's going to be doom and gloom i know i just think we've, we've done <laughs> it's, a lot it's awful the end <laughs> um, yeah uh i think uh from my experience is Trying not to compare yourself to others. Yeah. Yes. Fun that um, I think that seeps in. It's really subtle and you can do it. Mm-hmm. When you're trying to look for inspiration, it can also be a double-edged sword where oh, you're looking yeah. for inspiration and you're inspired to do something. You're looking for inspiration and you think, oh, well, look oh, at all this stuff. Nice. It's really good and my stuff's rubbish. <laughs> yeah. um, I, and so, yeah, so compare, some comparing to other people is like one of my biggest things that sort of really brings me down because there's always going to be someone better than you. You know, there's, there's, you know. I refuse to look anymore. It's so emotionally upsetting. (laughs) (laughs) I'm I'm totally serious. Like I I don't even pay attention or look. Yeah. No, it's good. Yeah, Dustin, you're like in a way better place um, than even, I don't know, when I talked to you like three months ago about this stuff, you just seem way more confident in the stuff you're doing now. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I was like, I think we're all at this point where we can do that because you start to build an audience, you know, that follows you and that loves what you're doing. And you can listen to that audience as opposed to if I go look up, um, you know, I, I do retro stuff. So if I go look up retro stuff on creative market or retro design goods, I will have a heart attack. I will find so many people doing stuff that I will like <laughs> have an anxiety attack and have to take like, you know, an anxiety pill and go to bed for the day. It's like, I don't look, I'm just like, it's me and my audience and then my close friends Mm -hmm. and that's all. Forget everybody else. Life is too short to get your heart going and your adrenaline going because you're upset someone's doing it better. Yeah, that's so true. I agree. I'm over it. I don't care. I think think my tip would be look at trends and make those trends as long-term as possible. So to give you an analogy, like we all sell um, digital products and stuff like that. And the less long-term you go, the more stressful it's going to be. For example, if you monitored sales every day, you're going to feel more stressed. (laughs) If you monitor them every hour, you're going to feel even more stressed. And if you monitor them every minute, you would be there refreshing once a minute, (laughs) having a heart attack. (laughs) Whereas, uh, of course, you can kind of track these things. But if if you're pinning all your like ego and self-doubt and all your hopes and dreams on like, oh, no, I had a good day or a bad day in terms of my results that's really unhealthy um and even to a point if it's a bad month it's like okay fine but when you start looking at the long trends so if you if you have a graph or whatever of your earnings or results or whatever it is you track in your business or or your creativity if you do that for years it doesn't matter anymore like that you don't see the bad days anymore and even if it's a bad month it's a little blip on an otherwise hopefully healthy line or trend or, or whatever you're looking at and that's been a huge thing for me because I am guilty of that. I don't know if you guys are where you literally like refresh your earnings live or something like that. And it, it's so unhealthy. And when you get away from that and instead go focus on the passion side of things like Lisa yeah. was talking about yeah. and, and then just step back and see the bigger picture, mm-hmm. it's a lot better for your, your whole mindset. And it also helps you focus, I think, because I spend pre majority of my time you refreshing things to see how many likes I've got or comments <laughs> and how how well I'm doing yeah. uh, in yeah, the, in my okay. marketplaces of where I sell my stuff. So <laughs> yeah, no, co- completely it's, the same for social media as it is for earnings. Yeah, completely the same. So Ian, like exactly that. If if, if you're live refreshing, that's going to be a lot more stressful than I guarantee. Now, if you go on your Instagram and just scroll down six months worth and go, oh look at how much smaller the numbers were then compared to now. Yeah. The second second thing is going to make you feel a lot better about yourself. Well, not, it's cri- not, all, crippling. not always. I mean, it feels amazing. <laughs> no. right? like, when something does amazing, yeah. if you're over the moon, right? But but I think most of the time it's not that. Most of the time you look at things, or especially if you're comparing yourself, you, like have you ever seen that? You see something, Lisa or 
or in, you see someone do something similar to you or they do something similar to you, but better than you. And you get that tightening in your stomach and you feel like you want to throw up. And then like your brain tells you, you should go look more into their work and go see what else they do. And you see more and you get more sick. And I, I don't know. Is that just I, I got me? That you feel that too? Cause I don't do it because of that. No, well, I, I, I mean, every now and then I, you get a, I come across somebody who kind of rips off your product in a way. Um, and, and I used to, I used to get upset and I used to get, you know, agitated, but honestly, I, you can't, you can't anymore. Mm. And, and I just see it as a compliment. It means that I kind of set some kind of trend or set some kind of tone that they want to copy. I don't know. Um, it's, it's, it's really a waste of, of time. And I think, um, oh, yes. it's a creativity killer. I, I just don't think you should do that at all. It's, it's mm. comparing again, you know, and it's no point. Well, then you end up focusing on what they're doing and trying to outdo it as opposed to coming yeah. up with your own innovative things yeah, exactly. that you're doing. Yeah. yeah. And if you concentrate just, uh, I mean, my tip, I guess, would be concentrate more on you being yourself because no one can really copy that. You know, they can try. They can try and kind of rip your work off or whatever. But at the end of the day, no one can really copy you the way you really do things. So if you concentrate on that and you mm-hmm. actually concentrate more on on how you feel when you create, I think that should be your focus rather than, I mean, if you're stressed when you're creating, then then you've got to look at that. You've got to understand, like, why am I so stressed when I'm creating? Because then there's something wrong. I'm, I'm doing it either for the wrong reason or I'm thinking about it in the wrong way, et cetera, et cetera. But if you are so, like, into creating and you're enjoying it, mm. then, hey, nothing else really matters, eh? Good. I think it's wise to sort of be... A bit like a tortoise where you do something and then go and have a sleep for oh, quite I like a while. That. I love that. <laughs> uh, you, wait, say that again? Or you, you do what? Or like, uh, or like animals who sort of, uh, you know, hibernate. So rather than constantly be on the go, um, that you do something and then you go and, you know, switch off really from all the stuff that could... This is more advice to myself, by the way. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's you good switch advice. Off the best for, you know, you switch off from looking at the social media constantly. You yeah. switch off from comparing yourself through looking at other bits. And you go and you focus on whether that's focusing on the project, whether it's a freelance yeah. project, whether it's like, you know, for me, it might be like a new typeface. It might be... Um, uh, I'm, I'm really trying to get some courses out and I need to focus on them. You know, there's... If I could have a breakdown, if there could be a bit of software that could break down my day and to show me how long I spent on s- <laughs> looking at stuff that's not helpful, which is the likes, I, really. I feel like there is. Yeah, there is a piece of software for that. I think. Is there? I'm going to have to get it because yeah. because it would be shocking yeah, and I'd, it out. I would will rake up call of, of how I need to sort of like sometimes. And that's why sometimes I go to the coffee shop and, you know, I just have my mobile because I can't really do great deal on that and then i just whether it's reading up on something or whether it's writing something out or yeah. thinking up something it, i take away the distraction of having my computer and, and and doing that i still have the sort of social media on my phone so but it's 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 getting away from it to be able to focus on your work and focus mm. on building yourself up i it, suppose you do develop like tunnel vision mm. i've noticed when you when you get into this like you're staring at your phone or your laptop and watching the likes and all of that, you almost forget about the world around you. Oh, and um, I think this is, this is almost something I think we should talk about next week at mm. length in terms of like getting away from it all sometimes yeah. and general work ethic. I think that, that could be a cool episode because, yeah. um, you know, I know when I get into that mode and I'm full of self-doubt and everything else, sometimes the answer isn't necessarily like shifting your work patterns in that instant. It's like, going and having a glass of red wine with your partner or something and just yeah. chilling. I guess that, that's kind of like the hibernation thing you're saying. Yeah. It's because we don't switch off. The problem is we're just constantly on, aren't we, with yeah. our phones. And I think, you know, we could do a whole episode of um, how to avoid burnout, really. Yeah. I'll so, yeah. yeah. You know, because you... I like it. I'm, I'm making a note. You can get burnout. You know, you uh, like, I, I, I'm quite blessed and I don't feel like I work particularly hard you know <laughs> Sorry, that's a, like that. that, way to that's make a, everyone that's a else feel bad you know? like, I, mean, I mean that is in I, mean, I like enjoy the work I do so it doesn't feel like not it, even trying yeah. Yeah. it doesn't feel like really hard work you know like I'm s- slogging all day to do it 
Yes. Um, so it's not burnout out of doing too much. It's burnout out of not being able to turn your brain off from yeah. Yeah. the digital world. Oh, and, that, that. and that for me, that's where I get burnout because it's just like my brain doesn't have time to rest because I'm just constantly thinking about the next thing yeah. I need to do. I mean, I've already got a tortoise in my head that's been painting and I'm back in the <laughs> shell. And... <laughs> I really, I, I really want to live on your world, Lisa. It sounds fun. <laughs> I have the same, but now with social media, but with emails, like customer emails, like are just... Oh, yeah. That's and crazy. these design cuts jerks keep... No, no, I'm... <laughs> well, you five times a day. <laughs> that is a, that's a pressure because I want to please you guys and I want to obviously have a good partnership, but like customers, you so want to take care of them. And sometimes you're like, you have to wait 10 hours, even though you wrote me at nine o'clock at night and said, you have a deadline. You're like, yeah. I have to go hang out yeah. with my kids. Like your deadline is important, but not as important as turning off. Like Ian said, yeah. put that in your out of office. Maybe just have like you looking gleeful with your kids in your arms. <laughs> just be like, I've got better things to do. My friend. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to take this away from me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. Ultimate yeah. guilt trip. So uh, cool. So um, I feel like we actually covered a lot this week, yeah. and, and we've got a game plan for next week. I, I think let's leave the listeners with a cliffhanger. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, we won't fall off that cliff. Uh, tortoise. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, so yeah, I guess any closing thoughts or time for the sign off. <laughs> um, it's been nailed. Yeah, uh, I think yeah. also also. Uh, I think, you know, tiredness can be a thing. So, and tomorrow is another day. Get a good sleep. Um, lots of coffee. That's, yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, the, hold on. I feel like that's sort of an oxymoron. A little yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Get lots of sleep, down a vat full of coffee. <laughs> yeah. I do do that too, though. I take a nap every day. And part of the reason I do it is because I'm most creative when I wake up in the morning. So I, I purposefully take a nap every day for about 90 minutes. So when I wake up, it feels like a second morning. Nice. Wow. I'm optimistic oh. again. I'm energized. I make my coffee. I pretend like it's two mornings in a day. It's great. <laughs> For me, swaying in a shower, just standing there, just just the water <laughs> going over me, and I'm like a million ideas come up. So yeah. it's I need a walk through it's, like, it's like a music video. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I like it. I feel like we're terrible at cliffhangers. Yeah. We've gone straight into next week. <laughs> but, next week's uh, episode, but, all of us talking while we're in our showers. Thanks so much for tuning in this week. We hope that you enjoyed this episode and found some effective ways to channel your own self-doubt when it comes to your creative work. As always, you can find all the episodes and show notes over at honestdesigners.com or search for The Honest Designers Show over on iTunes. If you enjoyed this episode, it would mean the world to us if you took a minute to leave us an honest rating or review on iTunes, as well as any questions that you'd like answered on the show. That's all from us and see you next time.